We're looking at more WAN technologies in this short video. This time we're talking about the technologies that came immediately after T carriers, which were used until the mid-1980s. It was then, around the mid-1980s, that fiber optic cabling took over as the primary transmission or communication method for long-distance carriers all over the world. AT&T by then no longer had its monopoly, and there were a lot of competing carriers all wanting to use their own standards for fiber optic. In 1987, all of the fiber optic carriers started dropping their own standards, and they decided to move to a then new international standard called SONNET, which stands for Synchronous Optical Network. And they were using this in the United States. In Europe, they were using what was called Synchronous Digital Hierarchy, which is known as SDH. When all of these competing carriers adopted the same standard, it made all interconnections simple. And in actuality, this beautiful standardized method of intercommunications across the civilized world was the true beginnings of what we know of as the Internet today. Prior to Sonnet and SDH happening, those interconnections were extremely expensive and cumbersome, which contributed in preventing the Internet from really getting to most parts of the world as we know it today. Sonnet is still used today as the primary standard transmission method for fiber optic, high speed, and long distance. Now, if you haven't watched this video yet called what is Ethernet, I'd highly suggest you watch it because in that video I talk about how Ethernet defines a standard for interface standards, frames, and multiple other things at the data link layer on local area networks or LANs. Sonnet has become the same at the long distance level. Sonnet defines a ring type topology and it doesn't require an actual ring, but when you look at a Sonnet ring you see how it is. it has kind of a fault tolerance built into it in case a line is lost or it's disconnected or it's cut, etc, etc. Most most of the telecommunication networks across the world have their optical pipes set up using Sonnet rings. Now you may never have to personally deal with Sonnet because it's dealt with by the bigger telecommunications carriers kind of behind the scenes. But I would highly recommend you understand it, especially for the certification exam questions. What makes Sonnet work so well is the capability it has for multiplexing. Now you can have multiple DS1, DS3, and the European E1 signals all combined into a single sonnet ring. And sonnet frames are huge. Since sonnet needs or uses high capacity fiber optics to handle the load of such huge data rates, we immediately have to talk about OC or optical carrier standards. When using sonnet, carriers also had to standardize or set the standards for the fiber optic cables and their data carrying capabilities, kind of in bits per second primarily, or BPS. Much like Ethernet defines speeds and capabilities for Ethernet cables on local area networks. OC defines that standard on the fiber optic long distance connections. The OC or optical carrier standard defines all of that. Medium to large corporations have certain needs for these communication and data lines over fiber optic and the OC standard defines those speeds from lowest to highest. Kind of in what they refer to as an escalated series. With Sonnet, OC defines speeds from 51.8 megabits per second, which is referred to as OC1, all the way up to 39.8 gigabits per second, which is referred to as OC768. Now let's say even more throughput is needed. If that's the case, we start using another feature called Wave Division Multiplexing, or WDM. And one of its newer versions is called Dense WDM, or DWDM. DWDM allows a single mode fiber optic cable to carry multiple signals by having each signal use a different wavelength. What each can actually carry varies from cable to cable and connection to connection, but a single fiber can potentially support up to 150 signals. Let's take this example. One OC-1 line, or OC-1 line, runs at 51.8 megabits per second. We've already established that. If you have 150 of those, or the equivalent with 150 signals all over the same fiber optic cable, you now have the capability of 7.77 gigabytes per second. DWDM became more popular and more widely used by long distance carriers because it was much less expensive to replace the previously used Sonnet or OC-X lines and equipment with DWDM than to add more fiber optic lines. And this leads us to the last of the technologies I want to show you and talk about on this short video, CWDM. CWDM stands for Coarse Wavelength Division Multiplexing. CWDM also uses multiple wavelengths of light to carry signals over longer distances faster. 
but CWDM is much simpler than DWDM or WDM, as DWDM and WDM only carry signals over approximately 60 kilometers. For testing purposes, and especially the Network Plus exam, you just need to know that CWDM is typically used on higher-end LANs and 10G base LX4 networks. This is because its lower cost provides a benefit to them when compared to competitors. So with a basic explanation of those out of the way, let's quickly go back to Sonnet. Sonnet uses the STS, or Synchronous Transport Signal, as its method. STS is essentially made up of two parts. The payload portion, or the STS payload they call it, which carries the actual data. And then you have the overhead, or what they call the STS overhead, which carries the actual signaling and the protocol information. When you're studying STS, you will usually add a number to the end of it to indicate the speed of that connection. So STS-1 runs at 51.8 megabits per second. It's on a single OC1 line. STS-3 runs at 155.52 megabits per second on OC3 lines. You'll want to study and know the following table of connections, speeds, and methods for the exam and know it by heart.